In this series of films on optical system, this is the second film on optical detectors. And we start with the fiber Bragg gratings, named after father and son Bragg. Uh, what we have is a piece of fiber, uh, which is burned by a laser, so it forms sections of the fiber with another refractive index compared to the original refractive index that you had to begin with. Uh, what happens if you send light with a mix of wavelengths here, white light, white light for example, is that a portion of the light is reflected back and that light has the same wavelength as the distance between these sections of another of the refractive index. And actually the same wavelength here will uh, not be a part of the light that is sent through because it's reflected. So it will be taken out from the original mix of wavelengths. So here you will have a section without the specific wavelengths because they were sent back. Well, that's uh, fine for now, but how is it used as a sensor? Well, if you take this fiber here and you stretch it, well, of course, then the distance between the, the section, sections will increase, and you will uh, see that as a shift of wavelength, a shift of the reflected wavelength. You will also see it at the receiving side as a shift of the portion that misses out from the original signal. So you can actually uh, measure the amount of stretch by by measuring what uh, what part of the fiber that re uh, what part of the original light that reflects back. Uh, you can actually make uh, a sec uh, many such sections in the same fiber, but they have to have a bit different core. Uh, wavelength. So if you take this here and you make a copy of that a bit further down the fiber, uh, you have to have a, a different distance between these sections here because you want uh, at um, w without influence from a stretch in the fiber, you will see one reflected wave wavelength from this fiber uh, from this uh, FBG portion and then another wavelength from the other FBG portion further down the, the fiber. So in that way, you can make multiple sensors on the same fiber, actually. Uh, so you can have one fiber surrounding, for example, an electrical machine, and use that to, do, uh, to, uh, to uh, measure strain in different portions of the same device then. Fabri Perron is very much the same principle, but that will be at the end of a fiber where you have uh, 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 some uh, chamber here with a membrane and what you see, the light you send in, uh, the there will be reflections uh, according to the distance that is in this orange field here or the or the chamber. So, uh, and that will match the wavelength between the two. So you can use that as, for example, a pressure sensor, uh, where the reflection, uh, uh, the, the wavelength of the reflection depends on the distance between the two here. But of course, the difference here, Fabri Perrault, at the end of a fiber, FPGs in the middle of a fiber. Fluorescent technologies uh, is where you have, uh, or any material you have, if you send light into that material, you will uh, get something called excitation. It will charge in a manner. And when you turn off the light, it will have an afterglow. For fluorescent materials, you will actually see that afterglow for some time with, with, a, with a naked eye. But uh, for many materials, uh, the, this excitation and decay uh, time uh, 
uh, is much shorter, but it will, you will have an excitation and a decay. And that shape of the excitation and decay is unique, but it can be made in such a way that it's influenced by, for example, temperature, pressure, humidity, oxygen concentration, carbon dioxide concentration. So by analyzing the excitation and decay shape of the fluorescent material, uh, you can tell how much, for example, oxygen there is in the material. Finally, the fiber optic gyroscope is a, a bit special. Uh, there is an ex external film explaining this one as well. But the thing here is that when you send light into a splitter, some of the light goes clockwise through this loop here, and some of the light goes counterclockwise through this loop. And of course, if the one that goes clockwise will meet the one that goes, goes counterclockwise at the same same time here and into a detector here here is the detector here but if you have uh if this turns around what actually happens while while the the light is going around in circle this one the whole uh, device turns what actually happens is that it will have to go a bit further before it reaches the finishing line, while this one that goes the other way around will have to go a bit shorter before reaching the the, uh, the finishing line, and the two will uh, receive at the end at different times. So, the more rotation you have throughout the time where where the beam goes in loops here, the more rotation you have, the more time difference between the clockwise and counterclockwise pulse of light and therefore uh, the, the the time difference between the two received pulses will be the amount of rotation you had here